Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Adewale Yusuf. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the new card visual that Microsoft just launched in June 2023. This card is amazing. There's a lot of things you can actually do with this card. So I explored this card on my own and I feel like I should share how you guys can do this yourself. Now, look at this, my screen here. You can see the different ways I've explored how to use this particular card with bullets, with um, sparklines, with um, bars and also some icons so I'm going to show you how I do this so let's do it now I'm going to start with a new page to do this I will start with the the card is right here in Power BI desktop on your screen it's called card new right it's the new card you know this is the old one the old one is where we have the one two three but the new card has this kind of AI sign like a fire sign so that's the new card so I'm going to select it and the beauty thing about this card is you can create a multi card you no know, unlike the multi row card that we have before this card has a lot of more functionalities as one the multi row card so look at right here I just brought in the card into my power bi and i'm going to select like three different measures into this card so i have these different measures for marketing expense i'm going to put i'm going to put the marketing um expense i'm going to put the marketing revenue and i'm also going to select the expense all right so this is three different um cards so let me change this to percentage um uh, marketing so I can reduce the test okay so I've been able to create three different um, card right now in just a matter of a um, few minutes so you can see the card here right one beauty thing about this card is you can kind of edit this card make it look nice uh, make it look very interesting any you want it so if i go to the formatting pane you see the different format options right here a lot of things you can do you see shape so i'll start with shape so for shape you can change these shapes to any shape you have the default shape is rectangle so i can change that to maybe a rounded um, um rectangle something like that so immediately i do that you can see that it has changed the shape of the card to a rounded triangle and you can kind of edit the size of the triangle here anyhow you want it you can edit that but this is not a particular one i want so the design i want is a different design so i will use a snip tab uh boot stop right that's a different design that i want yeah so this is the kind of design that i want and i want to kind of reduce the top as well so i will do maybe this this i'll do like um 10 10 each maybe ah, 21 is too much so let me do like um, okay so let me see five makes sense no 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 five doesn't make sense so i'm going to put 10 here and then um 10 here so i want to make the size of the yeah so interesting so this look like um it look like what i want so i can even reduce it like this so now i can add more editing to this particular shape and what i can do is that under something called um, card under card there are so many other things you can do here you can either since we have three different cards here you can either choose to apply the settings to a single card or to all of the card but right now i want to apply to all of the card so i want to switch on the ascent bar I'm going to switch on the ascent bar right here and then the ascent bar is um, um, something you can see to the left this you can see to the left so you can increase the width if you want to you can increase the width uh, probably I will increase it to like 12 yeah and I can change the color of that if I want to uh, I'm just going to change the color of that to maybe something like blue something like blue yeah you can change that the color of that to something like blue another thing you can do as well is you can add the border to it if you want to so i can put the same color as the border maybe probably blue as well then if you look at up here right here under padding you see the normal normal is the default padding so you can either use narrow custom wide but for me i think i prefer uh, the normal padding right another another formatting that makes sense is, is the layout of the card right you may want to change um, so, some layout in the card so if i switch on the layout 
So do you want it to be horizontal? Did you want it to be a vertical line? How do you want the, the, the layout of the cart to be? So if I change the layout to vertical, it's going to just change that. Now the figure itself, which is the colored figure, like the figure, the marketing and the percentage. So you can kind of change how that interact as well. So for the main value, I'll change the color of that to blue. And um, probably increase the size of that a little bit to 22. Alright, so that makes sense. Then I can cent center align it. So probably put it in the center like this. Then there's something I like about this. Show blank as. So when there's a blank, when there's blank, what do you want this to show? So I can just put something like any here. So when there's a blank, it just shows any. Then for label, which is the label of the card, I can do some kind of formatting to that as well so I'm going to change the label color as well to blue and then I'm going to reduce the font of the label all right now I'm going to change the position of the label as well I want it to be below the number instead of above so I'll just come to position and change that to below value all right so Great, so my card is looking like what I want right now. It's, it's looking like it, like what I want basically. But there's another great design that I'm going to add to it. That is image. That's one thing I love about this card, which is the image. I can add a glow, there's also a shadow, but I'm going to leave that. So it's the image. Image is something interesting. Imagine you want to add something like probably a, a I'm going to switch it on. So probably like an icon to your card. It's easy. So you can decide to add different icons to that to each of the card or you can decide to add one icon to all let's say i want to add an icon to everything now i'm just basically going to click on browse then um, i go to my download i think i have some uh, icons there so i'm going to select this this icon right here so once i select this icon it's going to just add the icons to the card which is interesting right and then you can see that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the um, the size to fit and I'm going to um, probably put, increase the size of the icon or reduce the size of the icon that depends on me whatever I want I can put it right there but if you look at my particular um, card that I showed the last time this particular so looking at this card you see that I have this kind of um, uh, like a bulletin on on the um, uh, like a gauge right like a linear gauge on the on the card so how do i add this right let me show you great so the way i had that if you look at my image under that image that i showed you the other time instead of having like an icon right there there is also an ability to add um, image url so let's look at that so image url so under here i'm going to clear this icon and then i'm going to change the image type to image url can you see that now the image url is asking for a link or i use a formula and that is what i like about this you can use a dax right you can kind of put some dark side that i can do a lot of beautiful things right so to do that i have this website that i have svg um uh, html code including dax that you can kind of use to do um a lot of great things right so I'm going to bring, so I'm going to bring the web, the website in. The website is called uh, kerrycolosco.com. Kerrycolosco.com. So you can go to kerrycolosco.com. Kerrycolosco.com, right? So once you get to that website, you go to templates. From templates, you come to SVG templates. So this kerrycolosco have put together different um, HTML SVG templates that you can use to integrate with your um, card. And it's kind of amazing. So when you go to templates right here on that template you can see a lot of different templates that you can use the code as, as well and amend the code to whatever you want so on the template there is a progress bar there is a circular gauge there is a range bars there is a spark lines there is a gradients there is kpi card uh, there is countdown timer kpi table and radial gauge so the one i want to use right now is the linear gauge which is this one right here on that progress bar so i'm going to select uh, the progress bar then right here you're going to see the different um, 
that's cool that you can use right so you can see the bullet and then you can see the progress bar so i'm going to copy this uh, bullet this is the one that i want so i'm going to select here to copy and then once i copy it i'll go back to my to my power bi so in my power bi i'm going to write a new measure and this measure i'm going to paste um, um the code i just copied from Kerico Luxo website i'm going to paste it here all right so this is the code i just copied so i can kind of um, um rename it so i'm going to start with the um percentage revenue so for percentage revenue uh, or percentage marketing so let me rename this all right so this is the code right here and then the next thing i'm going to do is just to change some few things here and if you look at this that's code you can see available was declared for the max plan the max actual the target and then you have all the variables being called back again using a max x right here and we also de declare variable for the wheat the percentage fuel and the, uh, also the percentage target and right here this is just a condition so if we're using this in the table we're going to get rid of this uh, condition if adds one value we get rid of that but let me just quickly change this basic um, um, input that we're going to put here so we have the profit plan so for me the percentage revenue at least we are expecting um, 100% uh, of percentage um, of revenue so I'm going to put one here so one is our is our plan is the hundred percent so the actual that is the percentage uh, of marketing to revenue so I'm going to reference my measure I have a measure here that I'm going to reference so it's called percentage of revenue generated so I'm going to reference that and then for the target so the percentage of sales is our target so i'm going to reference that as well so i'm going to reference that as well now another thing i'm going to do is since i've referenced everything i needed here you can see we call back all these variable back inside here so i don't need this condition because i'm not really using it in the table so i'll get rid of the condition i'll get rid of the condition and also the blanks and the comma right here so once i do that this is the formula and this is the svg that is returning this is the wheat this is the height and then this is the field you can see the field color is light steel blue you can change the color if you want so you can basically change the color from right here if you want but for me i'm going to leave that color as it is and i'm going to hit enter so remember what i called my measure is called percentage uh, underscore percentage marketing Okay, so now that my measure is done, uh, what I'm going to do is to use this measure inside this formula. So to do that, I'll go to under image, you see image, right? But since I'm doing it from percentage marketing, so I'm going to probably go back to this apply setting to, I'm going to pick only percentage marketing. So since that's the only uh, marketing I want to apply my um, linear gauge to. So I'm going to select that and I will come back to image. Now on that image, I'm going to click FX since I'm adding like a, a, a measure now. So I'll click the FX. Then right here, I'm going to select my formula, which is the formula I just wrote. It's inside marketing expense and I call it percentage marketing, right? This is it. So this is the percentage marketing. I'm going to click OK. Okay, immediately I click OK, you can see that popping up right here on my chart. So I can kind of leave it like this or you can format it. So I can change the position from that right to bottom, bottom yeah then once it's at the bottom i can change the size as well so i think i like um to use size 150 i'm going to put 150 here right and i'm going to increase the transparency a little bit probably to something like 15 so i just transparent a little bit so this is how to add the bullet point so i'm going to add it for others now okay so i've done the rest and i've added some filters so when i click um this slicer now it's going to be all those bullet points is going to be changing as i'm clicking the slicer is changing so this shows that i and i have a gauge right there that can measure uh, whatever i want to measure so that is it right there so on to the next card okay so the next card i have the sales unit sold and a transaction can card right here and if you look at the previous design that i showed you i kind of have um this design slightly different from the first design so how did i do that you go to shapes then under shapes you switch from rectangle to um, snippet tab both top and bottom okay so and then you switch on the customized style you can see customized style here so i'm going to switch it on all right so the customized style is on so what i'm going to do is i'm going to kind of 
um, the top right corner and uh, top left corner I mean I'm going to increase the size of that a little bit so you will see that the top right left corner is a little bit kind of um, so the top left corner is a little kind of bend so I increase this as to 20 then also the bottom um, right corner I'm going to increase that to something like 20 as well so I'm going to change that to 20 as well great so you can see that form the perfect shape that I want and that is the kind of shape that I want so I want to leave it like that so the next thing I'm going to do is to switch on the the ascent bar so go right there down there and switch on the ascent bar on my card okay so I want the ascent bar of this particular card on the top at the top unlike the previous one where we did left so the position of this is top and I'm going to increase the width to um, maybe 10 or 15 okay great so I'm done formatting the, the card so formatting the card is kind of easy just follow the part where I did the previous one so there's something interesting I also added to this particular chart if you look at my video I added a transparent um, spark line today so how did I do that so the same approach of uh, where we go to we go to Kerikolo website Kerikoloski website yeah and right there at this website just the different template I showed you the last time but the one we want is this particular spark line so I'm going to click on spark line then right here you can see that I have the area spark lines and I have the transparent gradient uh, spark line so I think I prefer this transparent gradient spark line because it kind of make there's this kind of beauty that it brings into your card so I'm going to copy the code the HMI code with that code and I'm going to kind of edit the DAX and just do some basic coding so let me copy this all right so I've copied this I'll take that back to my power bi so in power bi I'm going to write a new measure right so I right click and click on new measure and I'm going to paste the code that I copy right here in my new measure all right so right here in my measure you can see this is the code that I copy so I'm going to rename this as um, um, the um, sales spike line so since I'm doing this for sales first so let me rename this as sales spark line then you can see right here there's a lot of things I need to change right here unlike the previous one that I just changed only three variables right here there's a lot of variable being declared in this measure so we're going to be careful because when you have a lot of variable being declared like this you need to kind of look at it very well and look at what you need to change and what you need to uh, kind of um, work on so right here majorly what I need to change mostly is the date and the actual uh, anchor that I want to use which is the sales right so I'm going to start by changing this particular uh, measure called uh, financial date so another way you can kind of make this work faster is probably maybe take it to word and just do final replace and replace everything right but for me in uh, for the sake of this video i'm going to remove it one by one so right here i'm going to change this financial sales date right here i will change this financial date as well to my then right here you can see the the sum of gross sales value which is the actual value that you want to use so for me i want to use the the sales since I'm working on sales so I would like to use the sales figure so I have a measure for sales already and that is what I'm going to use so I'm going to select sales all right then I'll come back here as well again and change this to no I selected the sales measure now I need to change a few things as well so right here I'm I want to summarize the when table so I'm going to change this to when table change this financial date division right this divide I'm going to change this to when day. So I'm changing this one by one side so that you can see how to um, change this when you are working on all your own card visuals as well. So let me change this as well to my sales measure. Great, great, great. I'm almost done. So let me change this quickly as well. All right. So once I change this, then I'm kind of done. Now down here again, you can see there is another condition here. This condition kind of makes sense if you want to use this SVG in a table. I can remember some report I did in the past. I've used this partial SVG in the table, in a matrix table, and it's kind of amazing. So since we're using it in a card, not inside a table, so I'm going to get rid of um, if you have one value, if it has one value. So I'm going to get rid of that condition and then i'm going to get rid of this blank and comma as well it's part of the condition and i want to re return the svg image so this is the svg code this is the fill color you can see the stroke navy you can see the stroke width and then you can see different things here you can even see the size of this so if i don't want the stroke width to be very thick i want the line to be very thin right i think three is too thick so i can change the three to one and then also this 150 right this is like the, the the end of the line so if i don't want the end of the line to show i can change this 150 to 
um, 149 all right so once I'm done making all my okay since I've done making all my changes now I'm gonna go and add this inside my card and let's see how this is going to look like remember I'm applying only this to sales alone so I'll change my apply settings to sales sales right here and then I'll go to my image remember image so I'm gonna change image to URL so let me go and expand the image let me switch it on and expand image so I'm using the image URL so I'm going to click the FX to add the new measure that I just wrote called um, sales sparkline okay I'm going to select um, the measure the measure is sitting inside my marketing expense table it's called sales pipeline so I'm going to select that click OK and let's see how this is going to show in my card Okay, so once I added my new image to this, I'm going to have the size. You can see the size currently is auto or zero for some people. So I'm going to call the size maybe 130. I'm going to increase the size to 130 so that my line can be feasible. And right here, you can see the transparent line. It's a, it's a kind of amazing, right? Yeah. But there's a mistake I did there. I think I added this to all of the charts instead of one particular um, apply to a setting, which is just sales setting. So I'm going to change that back to only sales and I'm going to do the one for units sold and transaction count. Okay, so I have a measure I've created before for units sold and transaction count and I've added that. You can see it's amazing, right? Now let's look at the other card, which is the third card that has this kind of fill option. So I'm going to bring in the card. Okay, so I've created the, the third card. I just do a basic design of this and I'm going to add a progress bar to this. So how do I add a progress bar? I'll go to the same website of Kalikoloski, then right here on the website. Then I'm going to select this progress bar again. I think I've used a linear gauge from here before. So right, right now I'm not using a, a linear gauge. I want to use a progress bar. And when you scroll down, down here, you will see this called bullets. This is the one I used the other time. This bullet is what I used the other time. But what I want now is a progress bar. So I'm going to copy this code and go back to my Power BI. Okay, so I'm going to paste the code here that I just copied. I'll paste it here and I'm going to rename it. Okay, so I'm going to call it underscore marketing revenue linear progress. And I'm going to change some um, few things here. So what I'm going to change is the actual versus the target. You know, since I'm doing a progress. So what is the actual here? My actual is my... Uh, marketing revenue so I'm going to change that to my own measure which is the marketing revenue marketing revenue okay so I have my marketing revenue here and what is my target my target is the the sales revenue so I'm expecting that maybe 90% or 100% of my um, sales should be generated from marketing so I'm going to pick sales that is my actual and my target then right here, you see the condition again. Remember I said, since we are not using this in the table, you don't really need the condition. So I'm going to get rid of it. Get rid of it and also get rid of the blanks down here as well. So another thing you can do is you can change the color if you want to. So you can see the X code that this particular um, SVG is using right now. The fill color is uh, D0, 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 right? And the height is 15. So you can kind of, customize this to um, how you like it right but for me I'm going to leave it like this and let's hit enter and let's see how this is going to behave in our card okay my formula is done let me go and add that to my marketing revenue so I will change this apply setting to, to marketing revenue so I'm only adding that to marketing revenue and I'll scroll down to image so I'm going to add a new formula to my image URL so let me click on the FX and what is the formula call I think I call it my marketing revenue linear progress so let me click ok all right so my measure has successfully added so what i need to do now is to change the position so i'm going to change this position to below and i'll probably change the size to maybe 150 as well so let me change the size to 150 all right so and you can see that so when i'm clicking my um slicer everything is changing as well everything in my visual is changing as well as i'm clicking my slicer so let me quickly add that to the other measure i already have a measure i created for marketing expense and roi okay so that is it i've added the progress bar to marketing ROI and marketing expenses to just like the same way i added uh the one i added for marketing revenue so that is it you can as well add like an icon to each of the card instead of adding this dynamic svg 
can as well add an icon like what I'm showing below here. You should have just added an icon and this really are not dynamic so it's just um, static. So when I bought the other ones I added the um, SVG too. When I click the slicers they, they, they change as well. So thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel so I can keep dropping interesting content like this. Thank you.